All right, here we are. Don McTig, artist celebration of the one and only. So folks, just so you know, we are not completely sold out. We still have, we got the BP edition up for grabs. Woohoo! We've got the, what else is that? Another BP edition here. We've got, uh, yeah, it looks like, oh, BP Virgin. Another BP. We've got uh, some more BP versions. Boom, 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 boom. We got, of course, we've got the prints. We haven't sold out of those. That's sold out, though. That's sold out. We still have the Dotty Lady Sets edition. Love that one. Love that green. And now that I realize what you said about those um, uh, lured, uh outfit on there that, that never didn't even notice that. I love that. Um, <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. What else? Okay, that, I mean, that may be sold out. Okay, this version is still for still for sale, folks. So go to ladyfstore.com. Not everything is sold out. A lot of the uh, uh, Primo M's did get sold out, but a lot are still there. And, of course, the artwork, the uh, the prints. They will never sell out. be on demand for this weekend for sure before they're hidden. So, folks, this is a Q&A session. We have some in-depth, deep questions for Dawn. Uh, we're going to take your questions in for a fire round, but uh, we're going to go through the artist journey with Dawn, and we've got, what, 10 questions here. See if we can get them all off in the first half hour. After that, we'll take your questions. So, Dawn, I'm going to solo you out on here. Let's start with the first question. What is your backstory life like before you're a professional artist? Okay. Um, before I was a professional artist, I, um, well, I've always drawn, but then coming into uh, comics is where I really consider my professional uh, journey to have begun. And um, I was a, I was and still am a, a mom. So I have three children. Uh, currently their ages are 17, 15, and nine. Um, at the time that I was, uh, when JP Roth first contacted me about working in comics, I had just had my youngest. So I was full time uh, taking care of my kids, taking care of my baby. Um, we had just moved here to Canada and um, was just kind of getting, getting uh, going in our lives here, setting up our lives here. We lived in uh, Florida before that. Uh, my husband and I are dual citizens, as are our three children. So um, for us, it was just kind of a toss-up decision a little bit as to whether we were going to, you know, stay in the States or move to Canada or what we were going to do. Um, so yeah, my my life before comics was uh, crazy and a bit up in the air as far as, you know, what I was going to do. Um, and so I uh, I got into comics with with the baby <laughs> some so that, of my deadlines were i'm sorry go ahead jimmy i was gonna say that's the inspiration for a lot of folks because i know some people that you know well you, you can't be a professional artist you know if you're uh you have to be single or you have to be this or you have that. but you did it with family with kids i think you didn't let anything hold you back you just you still uh able to make it happen even with some people might find that oh it's too late now i have a family but yeah that, that's very inspirational I think, for folks to hear that. You, you still did it. Let's segue into this next question. What external struggle did you deal with to becoming a professional artist? So what was that externally that you had a master before you became pro? Well, for, for me, I guess my, my children are not at all a struggle, but finding time to become a professional artist, especially at the very beginning where, you know, you – you aren't established. You don't have uh, people that you're regularly regularly working for. Um, as far as the fans of comics in general, you've got none of them that know anything about you. You know, there's like there is that initial uh, hurdle that you have to jump through. So to do that with a, a baby and two young children was definitely an external struggle for me because you know. I was full time taking care of them. And when you have a six month old baby, you know, you can't let them just sit and play for a little while or they can't like watch a show and they're not going to like stick something in a, 
electric plug or, you know, like it's a life and death situation when you yeah. sit down to like try and draw when you have a baby. So I waited until my kids went to sleep. And so I'd say my external struggle was exha exhaustion <laughs> because when they went to bed is when I would draw. And so I drew all night and took care of the kids all day and would just pass out in random places when everybody was <laughs> handled <laughs> for a few minutes. <laughs> it's, fun fact, my uh, youngest daughter, her middle name is Dawn, and she's the one we weren't watching. She took a key and put it into the uh, uh, electrical oh socket and like zapped herself. So. Oh my God, that is like parents worst nightmare. I'm so sorry. And that's why you got to keep, folks, that's why you got to keep eye on your kids or have a good cage. Oh, to put them in. <laughs> the next question, what internally did you struggle with when you started to become professional? Um, I know uh, seems artists, they have that internal, like I'm not enough, I'm not. Um, so what, what did you kind of have to go through internally? Very much that one. Uh, the I'm not good enough. I really don't have what it takes my skill level is not where it should be. Um, and granted, my skill level wasn't, you know, there's people like JP Roth and Brian Polito and Zenoscope that trusted me when my skill level, in my opinion, wasn't up to snuff, you know, and of course, I'm comparing with, you know, J. Scott Campbell and Ebass and Mark Silvestri and all these like gods in the artistic universe that is comics. And, you know, there was there was that i definitely quit a few times uh jp roth would not allow me to stay quit which i'm super grateful to her for um and i would say the the internal struggle for me was just not feeling good enough and not feeling like i was able to do that and and make it look the way that i wanted to and you know that struggle honestly isn't something that has just flitted away and i am filled with confidence forever <laughs> because I, I'm just not like that. I am, and it's something I've had to accept about myself. I am a bit more of the, uh, if a negative spin can be put on it, I'll, I'll spin it twice, you know? <laughs> and, and so I really do um, look at myself negatively, look at my work negatively. And it's, it's something that I've had to work on to just not let it, to let it help me in a way to accept mm -hmm. that weakness that I personally have um, and use it more as like a springboard to help me get better. You know, if I don't like it, well, then keep working at it until it's good. Or at least if I'm if it's going to hinder the deadline, obviously, you do need to just kind of call it at some point and be like, well, what I wanted to do is beyond my current skill level right now, but I'm gonna keep working towards it and keep trying and, you know, yep. bang your head against that wall of your own limitation so that hopefully it just gets pushed a little bit further away <laughs> or you, you break through it just a little bit more to get better and to progress in those things. Like I will tackle something that I personally know is beyond my skill level. Um, just to force myself into, you know, trying to attain to it, trying to get better at that. You know, for me, my thing is backgrounds. It's not something I enjoy. It's not something I ever like just decided, oh, I'm going to draw a cathedral for shits and giggles. It's just no. <laughs> but I'm trying to add those things in or some element in the background anyway, just to, um, force myself into it. And, you know, I'm, I'm aware that it isn't perfect. It's not, you know, Sistine Chapel level, level anything, but at least I'm trying, you know? And uh, so I think my general negative spin on things that I put on myself um, has helped me try at least to progress and push forward. If I'm always discontent, well then, you know, try to like prove myself a little bit or at least you know cut myself some slack by at least i'm trying <laughs> all right so you mentioned hitting the wall so that's the next question so what wall slash problem did you hit when you had a that you must over that you had to overcome when you first started in the comics was there like what was that hurdle that that's a good question um what problem did you hit that you had to overcome 
I saw in your FAQ, you're like, you're, there's also your, uh, you know, there's a, that huge learning curve. Oh, about, okay. Know? Yeah, for sure. Maybe Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for me, I guess a lot of it was learning curve. And then also even just like the financial, uh, hindrances almost of like getting to conventions and the international flights and all of those things that that come together with like how am i going to get to conventions so i can get more work and so that i can get the word out and and talk about the comic books that i am working on and promote and all of those things when it's like you know you've got to to support that somehow, you know? So my husband really helped me out and put a lot of my artistic bills to start with because <laughs> I had nothing. <laughs> so, um, you know, there was, there was that hurdle. And then, you know, I didn't even have a light table at the beginning. So if you, if you go onto my website sometime, you can see my about section. I actually have a picture of how I rigged uh, some books, a slate of glass, and my my son's nightlight underneath so that I could light box the the pieces that I was working on. Um, another one was I had a cover deadline and um, my baby was really, really fussy. Nothing was wrong with him. I think he was just teething or something like that. But, you know, he didn't want to be put down. So there's actually a published cover um, that, you know, is brought to me every so often to sign that I drew with it propped up on a bookshelf while I was holding my baby to meet my deadline. <laughs> Modern problems need my solution. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay, so the next question. Right, yes. So what was the aha moment that you had uh, when you first started? Was there like, oh, I get it now. I should be doing this like that. And then like that kind of like put you on the path. Was there any anything you remember that? Anything anyone told you that was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Probably it was a lot of it was just having the proper mindset. And that that sort of aha moment was to to almost think of like, you know, I actually like am a little bit shy, actually a lot of bit shy. <laughs> I'm I'm shy. I am not um a, a very out there personality. I don't, um, I had a hard time figuring out how to uh, behave or act or be say at a convention or something like that. <laughs> I know this is gonna sound weird, but like being at a convention is, is overwhelming. And for me, for the first few conventions, it was almost too overwhelming. There was so many people and you know, I. it's not that I actually have like anxiety or with you know social gatherings or anything like that but it just it would make me nervous i would i would be uh scared to sign things for people and all of that stuff and um a friend of mine was like no at conventions you are a different dawn you need to be a badass you need to like be approachable and smile and talk because when you're shy, it, it doesn't really come across to the person trying to approach you who is also feeling shy that, you know, you're happy to see them. If anything, it comes across like, oh, okay, maybe I should leave her alone. She's having a bad day, especially when you're, you know, have black hair and, you know, wear darker makeup. It's just like this terrifying individual. And, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to leave that very bitchy, bad mood lady over there, <laughs> you know? And so I, I had to, to find a way to get out of myself, to, to, think beyond my own insecurities and my own shyness and my own like internal issues and just kind of um, get out of myself, I suppose, and just get out of my own head. That is not always a great place to be. <laughs> so I think that really helped of just like, you know, snap to let's, let's be, you know, outgoing and happy and stuff like that. And I see that at, at conventions, like yeah, newer artists, because you spend most of your time alone, right? Yeah. Or with a small group of people. So when you're at a convention where it's just like all this, it's like a total, total different mindset. I see that as a big uh, struggle for you. So, but you're doing a great job. It, surprising your 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 twists that you do and all the uh, online stuff you do, you come across as like you mash it now. Like that is that must have been a long time ago when you had that. Thank kind you. Of, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, okay, next question. So, when you when you were first starting off on your what plan did you have a, a plan um, to hit your your goals as an artist, or did you kind of like was it off the seat of your from your seat or pants? Or did you set up a goal? Uh, it seems like you and your husband, like you know, strong unit. They're a strong family unit, so you guys had a lot of support with that. So, uh, how did you uh, how did you start? Okay, um, it is very true. I have an amazing support system at home. My husband is. Um, I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. My husband is literally my my friend, my support, my everything, you know, and he has helped me a lot, you know, with even my my negative thinking or, you know, my shyness or any of those things like uh, as far as Twitch streams and live streaming, um, I started because I was sitting in bed drawing and my husband just grabbed my phone and was like, we're going to go live right now. and We're going to show the process of creating this commission. And I just like, no, please stop. <laughs> you know, so he's he's definitely pushed me and, you know, had faith in me and all of those things. And a lot of people have, you know, JP Roth had a lot of faith in me and just would not let me quit on her comic book series. And, you know, all of those things have really made a huge impact and difference in my life, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I was on my own. Um, and then as far as a plan, I, I would set these lofty goals. Like, you know, my Facebook page is going to have this many thousands of people by next year. And of course I haven't even reached that. And I set that goal like four years ago. So, you know, some of them are a little unrealistic granted, but at least it made me try, you know? Um, and I used to have this plan that I was going to, you know, be as good as Ebass or be as good as Campbell and, you know, just, get my work out there and work for this company and work for that company and all of those things, even though now I feel like I've got a little bit more realism behind my, my, my lofty goals, but it, it helped me shoot for the stars. If I, you know, hit yeah. somewhere, at least it's better than like the floor, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It seems like, yeah, if you have, to, if you don't know where you're going to go, you're not going to, to go anywhere I'm exactly sure. that's, that's great advice for uh, for new folks uh, starting up all right so here's 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 one what conflicts did you experience along the way in, uh, on your journey to where you're right now from where you began if you can think about where you when we came from to where you're now what kind of conflicts did you have to go through that actually if we make a positive spin to it like the conflicts that actually created you and you could learn something from that you're like oh okay that uh you know Good conflicts were actually okay. turned into um, <clears throat> For me, I would say a lot of them were progression conflicts in in my own mind and in my my own head, I suppose, as far as you know, what is the, the next step that I need to take in order to progress as an artist? And there's some that have been really scary for me as far as you know shifting the way that I work. I started in comics as an inker, believe it or not, and um, a interior inker for Mike Crum, and I did cover pencils. And it was all in the same book. I was the cover penciler and the interior inker. And um, it, it just, it started out of like, at the very, very beginning, I honestly was thinking all I wanted to be was an inker. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, over time that sort of morphed and I wanted to draw too. And then, you know, um, I'd say that a lot of the, the changes that come about, come about from a, a problem that needs to be solved, or it's trying to find a solution to a situation that isn't even necessarily a problem, but like over time, you know, the people that you're used to working with all the time, they also are progressing in their work and they're getting busier and all of those things. Like say for instance, Sabine, who I've grown up with my entire life, um, she got so, so busy and Ula and Nia and all the beautiful colorists that are the best of the best are also in high demand, you know? <laughs> and so then I'm like, okay, 
what am I going to do? Am I going to try to locate another colorist and find a, a, a working relationship with them where, you know, everyone has their own styles. And I know that my own style is particular. I know that um, sometimes I don't finish lines. Like I don't finish the full uh, lip. And um, Sabine always just knew how to do it, you know? <laughs> so um, trying to decide whether I'm going to find other colorists looking around or do I just learn how to do it myself? And, you know, I talked with Sabine about it for a long time and she was so encouraging and so helpful to me of like, if you decide to color your own work, then I will teach you. And Sabine taught me and then I learned something new. And that is is just a wonderful thing that I've I've learned over time is that even if something like scheduling things are an issue or you're having a hard time finding uh, someone who has time within your deadline schedule, well, either is someone new pops up that's going to help you and you get more people that you're working with or you learn something new because you need to get it done within that time frame you know so i would say what what those things have done is have made it that i now can color my own work and i've learned how to color digitally traditionally you know all of those things just because of the different projects that come my way that require different things how okay so how do you go up learning those new things so when you push yourself to learn something what's, what's the best way that you find that you the, lots of different ways well for starters i know i had an amazing cheat because my first uh digital colors that i kind of started flapping my little birdie wings on my own um was the lady death um crystal cavern one so it's the naughtier uh, hardback cover where Lady Death has the crystals behind and it's all kind of blue and purple and pink. Um, sold out, which, uh, <laughs> huh? Well, that one's sold out actually. Uh, okay, so that now. one's gone. But, <laughs> um, but that was, yeah, people love that one. That, that's <laughs> thank you. So that was my first time trying and I did it in conjunction with Sabine. So, you know, that takes more time from her as well to, to help me learn and all of those things. But for her, it's an investment. And for me, it's an investment because then, you know, she still does color my work when she has time, but she's an artist, a colorist for like J. Scott Campbell, Frank Cho, all of these amazing artists. And, you know, so she's, she's busy. And that was really the thing. It wasn't anything else besides scheduling. Um, and so she helped me and like, I got the colors back and I texted her and I was like, I mean, I got the flats where it's prepared for color. And, and I just had to message her on Skype. I'm like, okay, I got the flats back. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> and then she just kind of walked me through it. Um, and then for uh, traditional coloring, which is what I do all my interiors for. So I work on a series called Divinica and all the interiors are painted. I had no idea how to do it. But JP Roth was like, why don't you try uh, coloring this with watercolor? I'm like, I've never used watercolor before. I don't know. So I just went on YouTube and, you know, looked up tutorials, watched different artists and you kind of glean. Um, certain things that they do that kind of works with your own style. And then as you become more comfortable doing something, you then um, can kind of put your own spin on it and take portions of what you like about their technique and which things don't really work for what you're doing, you know? And from there, you slowly learn, but it's a process and it's like, uh, it's gonna take me a while before I feel that, you know, I. I can actually call myself a digital colorist, but I'm getting there, you know, and it's every time you just learn something new or see some technique or, you know, just random inspiration like we were talking about before. Okay, so I'm, I'm taking away from this, you have a lot of, um, we're well, always pushing yourself, taking things, trying more than what you thought you could to improve yourself. You're always learning, you're always- um, Yes. Uh, reaching out to people you have a, a, it's like a great community of uh family and friends that help you you have a support system that, that helps you out as well so that this is great so let's uh, uh so one of the last questions here what transformation did you experience becoming an artist so you talked about it seems like it's a slow gradual 
Thanks. So was there anything that, that seems to be like the biggest transformation that, that happened for you? It seems like mindset was, was one. Yeah. Um, you think that that's the biggest one, your mindset? Yes. Yeah. I'd say the, the biggest one is, you know, I, I would have to say trying to not care so much. Um, and, and realizing that like every little thing that happens is just part of the process. And, you know, I think that some of that comes with just getting older and like gleaning a little bit of maturity, hopefully. <laughs> and then also just um, changing the way you view things, you know, something, something that seems like a, a struggle right then eventually is no longer as much of a struggle. Like for me, I, I just need to look at things positively um, and and take every little thing as as just a stepping stone as opposed to like the world is ending and I should just give up and die, <laughs> which is is my inclination. <laughs> All right. So last last uh, question here from from me. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years as an artist? Where, where do you see you see taking your artist? So you've been coloring, uh, it seems like you're doing painting. So where do you see yourself? Uh, I guess where, what's your goal? Where do you see? Where do you want? What do you want to achieve? What's the uh, what's Don McTague's plan? World domination. <laughs> My plan for world domination. I love it. Um, I would like to see myself become more well well rounded as an artist. Um, I would like to see the series that I work on, which is called Divinica, actually really like get out there. More people will know about it. I want to grow up and be Brian Polito. <laughs> and, and, you know, just, but then also be, continue working with the people that I do work with now, you know, like, um, I really feel that the, the people that trusted me at the very beginning are the people I will always love and adore, you know? Yes. And they will always have that place in my heart of, you know, gratitude and loyalty. And um, so that, you know, Brian Polito, JP Roth, Zenoscope, all these, these companies that really trusted me from the get-go. And then um, I want to work on Divinica and have that. I have other uh, personal projects that I have planned and, you know, all of those things will come together to hopefully just becoming more well-rounded. And I also really want to help other artists. I, I really believe that um, part of my duty in being, and the help that I received is to pay it forward. So I'm really trying also to pay it forward to other artists that are starting in the community, you know, or have that goal that they want to get from A to B and become published and things like that. I'm really trying to help and encourage them too. So a lot of the live streams, you know, one of my big goals in them is to explain some of those things that like I didn't know at the beginning and were explained to me and the process and what paper to use and all of those things. It's all part of my goal to not only grow my own work and, and do more work, but then also pay it forward so that other people know what to do in, you know, their journey. Thank you so much for asking these questions. I had yet yeah, just see the full circle of your journey where you are beginning to where you are now. That That's so great that you want to go back and help. It's almost like you want to go back and help the young Don McTague from the beginning. As exactly. <laughs> so, folks, uh, if you have any questions, make sure you throw them in the comments. We're going to do a lightning round. So for the next uh, 15 or so minutes, we're going to have your questions here. We're going to pop up onto the screen, and uh, we'll have Don answer some of these. Uh, here we go, Jason Jensen. Oh, what, so what social media platforms? platforms? I am on Twitch, um, Facebook. So Art of Don McTagg on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. My personal page is dead. So if you're like, um, it's really my my snooping grounds where I get to see all of my friends and what everybody else is doing. But like, I actually am active on my uh, actual art page. Um, and then uh, I have a Instagram account and it's all just my name. So you can find me really easily. <laughs> That's right. That's all that. You said you you chose 
to keep Don McTay because it was easier to find or like there was less of that, that Correct. last name? Yes. So legally, my name is Dawn Schwartz. Uh, McTagg is my maiden name, so it's my birth name. Um, and my husband and I decided together that I would go with McTagg for my uh, art name just because of the fact that there are no other ones. <laughs> and there were already Schwartz in comics. So I was like, OK. <laughs> Good marketing move. Good marketing. Uh, from Shirley, would you ever consider doing a rock album by using your artistic talent? Or doing a figure using one of your female characters for sure it's all a matter of scheduling and so that is the main thing that um you know <laughs> that would hinder me from being able to do that but that sounds way cool uh another question that jason had uh touched on it before did you go to art school training I am self-taught slash peer taught just from you know the amount of help and critique that I've gotten from other artists in the comic community. Um, but yeah, self-taught. Fun fact, Jason Jensen's for people who don't know, he's also a coffin uh, colorist and he was Jason! The, uh, chaos days. And he's also self-taught. Uh, that, that picture right there, his, uh, his desk of all his, um, his uh, markers and stuff. So that's, that's cool. Two self-taught artists coming up. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, just the saying uh sold out in uh, in a few minutes yep that's right Thank congrats you, on that again. uh t -t 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 -t. okay so carmen yeah carmen and huge fan of yours carmen sakara i love so, you carmen is someone else loving your digital colorization very cool uh so folks if you have any uh new questions make sure to oh okay here we go jason again jason's super talkative what art do you like to do outside of comics Oh, you know what? That's a great question. I don't really have time for any art outside of comic art right now, just because of the fact that, you know, I'm a mom and working full time on comics and stuff. But I did used to be into uh, like abstract painting where you just like throw art on, throw paint on the wall. I love that. To me, there's like <clears throat> excuse me, there's a freedom in it because you're not critiquing you know, the the anatomy or the perspective or anything like that. So it's like someplace my eyes can look to rest. Um, and I, I just love it. I love those abstract, just dry brush stroke for no apparent reason over here and stuff. So I, I did a couple paintings like that way back when. Um, but I, I like looking at that kind of art too. I love comic art and I will look at it forever till I die. But then have seeing some of those paintings as well, like we have a big one in our house, which incidentally I painted for a friend years ago and now we're just renting the house from him. <laughs> and it's seven feet by nine feet. So it's one of the only big paintings that I did like that. Um, <clears throat> but I can stand to have it there because there's really nothing for me to pick on. It's just paint thrown at the wall. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have to take it down if it was like, you know, actual drawing because I'd be picking on it, you know? Speaking of abstract, have you seen like the animals drawing like cats? Cats actually take ink and do it and the monkeys and- uh, uh, I elephants. haven't. That is so fascinating to see the animals creating artwork, so. That is cool. <laughs> uh, okay, Chris Palma, we do any remarks at best? best. Hmm. That's, that's I don't know how all of that is going to work. So I'm going to wait until I hear instructions from Brian. <laughs> Speaking of that, Sword Fest 2021, be there. I'm looking Sorry. forward to it. <laughs> okay, where's the comments? Okay. Um, oh, I have to do a drone. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, bup, bup, bup. Okay, it's from Jeff. Here we go. Who's your favorite character to draw besides Divinica? Besides Divinica, okay, I uh, I love drawing the characters that I get to draw now. I love drawing Lady Death. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoy drawing Harley as well. And the reason why Harley is fun to draw is because she has so many facets to her character. So, you know, with a lot of uh, comic book characters, you need to think, or at least I think personality first because there are some poses and facial expressions and ways that they react that would not be appropriate for that character, you know? Um, 
Wonder Woman, for instance. I love drawing Wonder Woman as well. Wonder Woman, you you wouldn't put her in in a pose that's you know cheeky, goofy, overly sexy, things like that. Just it wouldn't be part of her character, and it would kind of be a little off putting when you look at it. It's like yeah, that doesn't you know that kind of looks like something else cosplaying as Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman wouldn't do that, you know. So it takes it out of what you or me in my mental mental picture of what Wonder Woman is and how she would react. She wouldn't stand like that, for instance, you know? So I think in that way when I'm choosing how to draw a character, whereas Harley, it's almost anything goes, you know? You can, you can kind of picture her doing that, you know? So Harley's really fun to draw for that reason. And I am no way dissing Wonder Woman. I love drawing Wonder Woman. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that Harley gives a, a lot of artistic freedom in that way. Um, I love drawing all the Rothic characters. I love drawing all the, the Lady Death characters, you know? Um, it's just, it's all really, really fun. But it, it's hard to just pick, oh, this is my one favorite character to draw because I like the variety. I like being able to flit around and, and draw different characters because then you get to tap into a different part of your your brain as far as ideas or outfits or all of those things. But being able to draw Lady Death outfits is really up there as far as like fun times. <laughs> I guess the next, next obvious question is, who's your uh, favorite child out of your three kids? No, oh, I'm not <laughs> answering that question. I love them yeah, all. <laughs> This is Chris, oh, Chris right here. What is Bella's favorite metal band? I love In This Moment. I don't know if that completely counts, really? but um, I absolutely love In This Moment and I listen to all of their albums. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, again, for another question. What influences your costume designs? The most random shit. <laughs> I take inspiration from wine glasses, from uh, lizards, apparently. Um, and then, you know, clothing, architecture, it's just all over the map. But I have a deep respect, like Brian said, for Alexander McQueen. Like, oh, his, his creations are just another level. And then the woman that has taken over from Alexander McQueen, um, she is also just unbelievable. So I, I have mad respect for like the, 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 the design in, in uh, fashion and all of that. And especially the stuff that, you know, probably nobody would actually wear um, out somewhere. <laughs> you would just like walk down the street and something that you can't even move in. But that stuff is art. Like Brian said, it's sculpture. It's incredible. And I just, I find so much inspiration in things like that. We got one from Howard here. Are there any other artists that inspire you? Very much so. Many, many artists. Um, I am very inspired by uh, J. Scott Campbell, by um, Eric Basaldua, by Mike Crome with his backgrounds and his crazy imagination, by Sabine Rich with her amazing color work and that she just puts so much depth. Like, when she colors something, it's like you're looking into a window and you're seeing two miles down the road. Like that uh, is so hard to do. It, it like now that I am I'm trying in my hand at digital coloring, I am seeing even more how difficult it is to do that and how to paint like a environmental glow on something and to make it so that you feel that you are standing in front of a window looking at a scene that goes way back into the page. Like, you know, you are drawing on a flat paper surface, even if it's digital, it's still one dimensional and you've got to give it that thing by like optical illusion. And so I'm inspired deeply by Sabine Rich's color work. And, you know, there's so many artists that I respect and admire, but those would have to be some of my top four. <laughs> so the, uh, the coloring contest that you just judged, we just not yesterday, what, what are your thoughts on that? How, how do you, um, so seeing folks just coloring it like old school with, you know, pens and crayons and, and paper. So how did that make you feel to see, see folks taking the time to, uh, cause they got really into it. Like that, the one person took four hours to color it. So, uh, any thoughts on that? 
Oh, I was impressed, honestly, with the 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 girl who did that in four hours. I thought it would have taken longer. So that was that was really impressive to get that done. Uh, honestly, in my opinion, that quickly. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's so cool to see other people's takes on things and the colors that they would give it and the spin that they put on it. And I will admit that Lady Death's tone toning is is difficult to portray. It isn't the the easiest to color something all white like that, and and um, and give it depth and show the 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 different shadows and all of that while working in just grays and whites. Um, so I have mad respect for everyone who did that because I do traditionally color Lady Death sometimes, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge to get it right without making her look too dark gray you know, but to give those highlights. And working with white is always a bit more of a challenge than than other colors, you know, and trying to give enough white, but then also so show tone to show depth. And I know how hard that is. And so everybody did a really good job. Question, old school metal. Do you have any old metal? Um... <laughs> Let me see. Uh, I really like Metallica, and so I would I would have to say them for sure. One of the big four. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Okay. So, what is Mike? What's the best part of the art creation process? It's a good question, Mike. Um, for me, I'd say probably the best part for me. So the the parts where I'm exceptionally happy is in the um the final line art stage i'm the most comfortable in the the final lines and the inking uh the blank page part where you're looking at a white piece of paper and the the temptation to think oh my god i don't know if this idea is right i don't know if this is going to be good am i submitting this one and it's not going to be something the publisher likes like there's a lot of that kind of internal struggle but once the pose has been chosen and you know a lot of the thought process has been worked out and you've got that final approval on your rough sketch or whatever then it's just fun <laughs> so i'd have to say probably that stage um and then traditional coloring i feel a lot more comfortable in digital coloring i'm still a little nervous but you know maybe in a couple years my answer will change <laughs> all right so what's your thoughts on what Brian Polito has created here, this, the Sworn Nation, the fiends, this community, um, it's more of it's more of a social club. It's more it's not so much about just collectors. It's, it's just something next. It's like a next level of of community. So what's your thoughts on on that? Honestly, my thoughts are from the you know awe and respect and like oh my god how and you know from from the the artist side of it and just seeing the impact that he's had and you know even the things that he's done in the comic book industry as a whole and the impact he's had on the overall like i just have so much respect for brian and everything that he's done and then the way that he has the energy to go live and and i know it's it's exhausting even if all you're doing is sitting here you're you're still talking you're still emoting and like i'm not emoting like a a, a drop in the bucket compared to you know brian <laughs> it's like bing! and it's so impressive and like him and Francisca, I, the thing is, I think at the end of the day, it's it all comes down to the fact that that is so completely genuine. That yeah. is Brian. That is Francisca. That is all of you guys. I've met you guys, and and it comes from the heart. And so it's almost impossible to to mimic that unless you you have that feeling so completely running through your soul and how much he cares about the fans and he cares about the fiends and the sworn nation and all of that. Like it's, it's incredible. It's not really like you could make a business plan of everything Brian has done and hand it off to somebody else. And that could be replicated. Um, so my whole thought on it is just like, damn high five. <laughs> I guess what you're saying too, is it almost seems like Brian is like this, uh, electric rod that takes like whatever that is like force coming into him and it goes out through everyone else that he touches is just like yeah 
Where's our, his Thor's hammer? Because I'm telling you, it's just like. <laughs> All right, so we got one more left. Let's take one more question here. We got Lauren asking for some advice here. Advice for female artists who create sexy female subjects. Uh, dealing with their hair. How do you deal with their hairs who say it's too sexy or dealing with weird requests? Honestly, you know, the, the haters are going to hate. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, I think it all comes down to what's in your heart. And, you know, I know, Lauren, I remember you. I met you at Dragon Con, right? And you are just, um, you just find the, the female form and drawing pinup art and all of that stuff. It's just beautiful. And it's, that's where I come from with all of this stuff. I've been told that I should be ashamed of myself for how I draw the female form and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And it's just like, who cares? That's just your opinion, man. <laughs> and, and just carry on living my life because I know that I'm just drawing something that I personally, as a woman, find beautiful. And, you know, if it isn't the right shape or size for somebody or it's, you know, too revealing or not, I swear to God, I would not be caught dead wearing some of the outfits I draw, but I still like to draw them because it's fun and because it's pretty and because it's sexy and because, you know, that just makes me personally happy. Um, weird requests, you know, if you don't want to draw it, don't don't draw it. And, and just be like, you know, and so, sometimes the person doesn't even feel that they are making a real weird request to you. It's just what's beautiful to them, you know? And so uh, all I, if I'm just not comfortable drawing that, I'll just say, you know, for me, that's just not really something I'm comfortable drawing. And no one's trying to make anybody feel bad or uncomfortable. Um, but I just will kind of respectfully decline to draw that if I don't really feel that it's within my artistic realm or I just don't want to draw that you know there's certain things that I just am not comfortable doing and so then I'll just you know take a pass but other than that it's just you know rock on <laughs> and do draw what you feel is beautiful to you or what speaks to you and then you know just let everybody else's opinion go away draw for yourself <laughs> great response all right, folks. Well, thank you very much, Don. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us today, uh, answering all these questions. Um, you know, I know I personally love it. Coffee Comics love it. The Fiends, the Swarns, everyone loves it. You're doing so. Thank you. This is celebrating you today, folks. You, still have, uh, you know, there's still some items out there. Uh, Ladyfstore.com. Go make sure to go check those out. Go visit Dawn online. Go see. She does awesome live uh, drawings that she does. Twitch and, and Facebook. Everywhere else, go go sign up for her social media. Make sure to uh, support Don as well. So, uh, anything else you want to say before we sign off? Just thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for your support of Coffin Comics and of my work. You guys rock. I love you tons. Take care. Awesome. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Stay positive, and always stay warm. See you next time.